So in the previous video, we started out by slapping together this uh, studio live event stage. It's obviously not complete and not particularly well constructed, but it was a good demo to show some of the basics of placing objects and starting to set up a stage. Uh, we're to the point now where we should take a look at lighting, because right now this doesn't look lit in any way like a live event stage or studio of any kind. And when we start to talk about lighting in Unreal, it's important to understand that there's a few different kinds of you know what we would consider light in the real world versus what we have in Unreal Engine. So if I start with just looking at um, going into meshes and props in the Virtual Studio Kit, and you'll see some lights down here. Not all of these lights are actually light for the Unreal Engine scenes. They're, these are in a props category because they're props. They're visual uh, objects that the user can see. And it's also important to understand that at the moment I'm using a GTX uh, GPU. It does not have ray tracing, and so I'm not doing any ray tracing. And so that really kind of highlights that you know this prop is not really emitting light. It has a material that's considered emissive, which is giving us this white spot of color here. Uh, and that is looking to a viewer like a light, but it's not actually emitting light, you know, projecting light into the scene. We don't see a pool of light under it here on the floor. So this would be useful to, uh, you know, basically position up in the grid. We could do lots of them up there and make it look like we have a big lighting studio set up. And, and that's fine. That's great for adding authenticity to the scene, uh, but it's not really lighting the scene. Okay. The emissive material that I mentioned is another thing that can be used to simulate lighting instruments. Um, but again, especially when you're not using ray tracing, they really don't project light into the scene. So let's take a look an example at an example of that. You know, we had changed the materials of the floor in the past, and the material, you know, is just a glossy item. Um, if we go to facades, we can illustrate this example a little more. Here's this uh, SM facade cubes. I'm just going to bring that out. And when we look at that on this stage, you can see that there's actually two different materials on this particular mesh. Uh, there's the wood planking material, and then there's also this metallic material. And just like we were able to change the material on the floor by dragging a different material into one of these elements, we can certainly do the same here and we can change each of these independently. So if I go to Virtual Studio Kit and go into Materials, I could certainly go into, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, Glossy, right? And then take Glossy Red, drag that into where the metal is, and now there's Glossy Red there. But there's another kind of material over here that are glowing. If I go into the glowing folder, you'll see that these materials actually appear to be emitting light. So if I drag this glow into where I have my currently red material, now this looks like lighting instruments embedded in the wall. Uh, but again, I'm not ray tracing, so it doesn't actually cast any light on the floor, uh, but it does look like lighting. So, you know, with the props, the meshes, and uh, materials like this, we can uh, create the sense of lighting in the scene, but we still haven't really started lighting the scene. So I'm just going to kind of position this wall a bit underneath the balcony here. It looks like we need a little more floor. So one, shift, two, shift, click three. And I will uh, alt drag these back. Whoops, undo, alt drag. There we go. And there they are. So now we've got enough floor. And uh, I'm just going to put this here and then alt drag. So now I've got this back wall, alt drag, and one more alt drag. And then I think what I'm going to just do is take these three, click, shift, click, shift, click. And I'm going to alt drag those forward and over just to kind of make this kind of a staggered kind of a look. Just pull that back a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we have kind of a back wall and it looks like it has lights and, and we now know that we could throw a lot of uh, lighting props up in the grid and we could even put them down on the floor. You know, again, if I go into meshes and props, there's some of these uh, like a circular light, right? So I could just drop that on the floor and then alt drag that to the other side. And so that adds a little bit of accent 
uh, decoration. In the real world, we would consider that a light. Uh, but again, we're not really changing the lighting in terms of the light hitting the walls and the desk and things like that. So that's the final piece of this tutorial is just to take a look at under place actors, you can select lights and there are a variety of lights. Now we already have a directional light here. It, it simulates sunlight. It's like all uniform light, all shining in a single direction. Uh, it's not like a point light. A point light would be like an incandescent bulb or an LED, just a light bulb sitting out in space. It's not particularly directional. It's just, you know, a, a pop of light. And of course it gets caught in reflections um, and that could be moved around. Uh, a spotlight is another kind. I'm just clicking and dragging that in. The nice thing about a spotlight it is that it is directional. You can see it's creating a bit of a pool of light. I can increase its intensity here in the details. Um, there is an inner and an outer cone, so we can kind of dial in just, you know, how much that light actually is projecting. And again, because it's directional, I could rotate it and maybe face it into the wall here. Um, just note that, you know, similar to the reflection capture that we talked about in the previous video, the spotlight floats in the editor view as an icon. That icon doesn't indicate the direction, like this icon here isn't the direction of the light, this arrow is the direction of the light. The icon just catches our eyes so that we can see that uh, that's where it is and we can click it and select it and, and that sort of thing. Um, if we were in our player view or if we switch to cinematic view, we don't actually see that light floating in space. We just see its effect. So uh, here we go. We'll go back into our default viewport. And um, there's one other kind of light that I figured I'd mention, and that is the rectangular light. Um, and this kind of works like a Kino flow or a large... Um, you know, panel light or large diffuser, we can, um, you know, dial in the width and the height here in the details. So we can make a big, large panel light. I can rotate that down and, and you can see that it has a more rectangular effect. Now, what we're seeing here in the scene is just a preview of the lights. We're going to need to build the lights so that Unreal can basically cache them all into memory. Um, that's what makes it so efficient for uh, real-time rendering, even with GTX boards. Um, one note about these lights is that there is a, a setting here called mobility. And if you use stationary or movable, then Unreal is going to configure itself to recalculate these lights for every single frame. And it only really supports a certain number of these uh, overlapping at any given moment. So if we're really lighting a big studio like this, and we're not going to be moving a lot of uh, content through it, we're going to just be compositing live action into it, uh, the better choice for this mobility is static. And so if I click each of these lights and set them to static, then uh, there's no limit to how many of these can overlap one another. And then we can simply run our build lighting uh, so that the scene can be calculated. So just to finish this off, I'm going to go ahead and run that. Before I run the build lighting, I'm going to find that uh, main light that's in the scene, this directional light. It shows up here in our world outliner as a light source. And I'm just going to hide it by clicking this eyeball button so that now we're really able to see the lighting of the scene without that sunlight directional light coming in. And once this is calculated, we'll really see the effects of these lights. And so I just go up to the build button here, click the drop down, and choose build lighting only. And then Unreal will run a little bit of setup and then calculate all of the lighting interactions between the different lights, the shadows, the props, the floors, the reflections. All of that is being calculated behind the scenes right now. And then once it's completed, it'll be applied effectively as a, a light map to this world. So this lighting build is complete now and you can see we have a very different look to our scene and then we can continue this process adding more lighting uh, through the place actors into the scene and more lighting props through uh, the prop selections that are available. So I hope this helps. I suggest you know we play around with a lot of these different lights and experiment with them, play with the props. You know this this light cube by the way is, is pretty fun if I scale it down 
really small and then just extend it vertically we kind of make these little light bars and the more lighting you put into these scenes uh, the more dynamic and dramatic you know the walls and everything will look uh, so you know definitely play around with that so I hope this helps you know, until next time have fun